the other man, Mike, is deteriorating quickly. But then, backup arrives. I can see an IRB coming. I mean, get off the rocks and drop him to the IRB. There's a clubby trying to do a rescue and they're about to get smoked on the rocks. A volunteer surf lifesaver is attempting a rescue in the rip at North Bondi. Nicola is called to back up. Should we go quicker? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've seen that. The clubbies are all freaking out. They're screaming for more help. He's just gonna have to go straight out. So I could see one club he's gone up the rocks, lost his board. He's probably gonna get in trouble. I think there's one boogie boarder. I've lost sight of him. Nicola offers assistance. Yeah, Nick's going way out, boat ramp style. We've got a mass rescue in 10 foot surf. This is heavy, very heavy. Nicola asks local surfers if they've seen an elderly man on a bodyboard. Is there someone else? I was just checking, just like, hey, is everyone OK? And, and they were like, no, we think this guy will get into trouble. That guy? OK. Nicola identifies a man clinging to a bodyboard. He should not be out here. You all right, mate? All right, jump on. Yeah. Uwe Krabb is on holidays from Germany. And Nicola seems to be coming in. She's doing a rescue. She's got one on her board. We actually got in once, and then he jumped off. But he jumped off in the rip and went straight back out. The exhausted German tourist has been battling for over half an hour. Nicola makes a second attempt to save him. Hold on. She's going out. She's absolutely battling. The powerful rip pulls them out to sea. The waves were so big, there was so much happening. I had the rocks right there, and he just can't understand what I'm saying. And I just couldn't communicate with him. And we're sitting in the rip, just going out to sea. And then finally, like, I got him on the board and I had to roll a wave with him. The man struggles to understand Nicola's instructions. Next thing was, how do I get him in? The waves are massive. At that point, I, I knew I couldn't get him back in to the beach. Nicola's doing the gnarliest rescue ever. She's in a terrible spot. She needs assistance. Harry's is stationed onshore with the buggy, but can't back up since there's only one vehicle available to cover any other emergencies. Mate, we can't leave this vehicle. If anything else happens on the beach, we are screwed, mate. She's just got to take it on. Hold on! At that point, I, I knew I couldn't get him back in to the beach. Nick, 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 go up the rocks, please. It's impossible for Nicola to fight against the rip. She has just one option left. The narrow boat ramp is sandwiched between rocks. Right, we're going to go up there, OK? Yeah, OK. Off-duty lifesavers back up. Nicola has sent him up the rocks, which is one of the heaviest things to do, and two bystanders drag the guy across the rocks and up to the boat ramp. A lone swimmer has been spotted several hundred metres from shore near the shark nets. Oh, yeah, I see the guy. I see him. Mate, thanks for that. Mate, there is a guy so far out. Central to the guys on the beach. Oh, there's a dude. He's in between the yellow marker boy and the shark nets, and he's not swimming real good. 
A person treading water so far from shore is clearly not a bay swimmer. Yeah, hey, he's got two hands up, mate. Max is in his first year at Bondi. Being that far out, if you're not a strong swimmer, you just no way get back to shore. He was swimming out in the middle of nowhere. Volunteer lifesavers have an inflatable rescue boat already in the water. Cause we could be high in the water, so we just send them. Yeah, that'd be great. With time critical, the IRB is directed to the man. I saw the IRB pick up the patient at probably about 100 metres before I got there, but I was still worried about the welfare of the patient, especially being that, that far out to sea, so I decided I would signal the, um, the volunteers down and perform a welfare check on the patient out in the water. The IRB makes the rescue, but heading for shore, it stops. So the IRB had stopped moving and I'd sat up my board to have a look at what was going on and I was wondering if they had started performing uh, first aid or CPR on the patient. With the chop in the ocean that day, I actually couldn't see the patient in the IRB. When I saw the patient sit up and I saw he was conscious and breathing, it was a sigh of relief. The IRB has broken down, so the volunteers hand the patient over to Max. 18-year-old Alex is conscious, but disoriented. Now, Max faces a half-kilometre paddle back to shore. It remains unclear why Alex was so far out. It was a weird sort of state he was in. He was sort of aware of his surroundings, but at the same time, he was so tired, so confused. After an exhausting one-kilometre round trip, Max finally gets Alex back to the beach. When he walked out of the water, you could just see he was exhausted. He didn't look like he was in a good way. Just come up there and sit down with us. Let's take him up. Ronnie lifeguard to Bondi. We got a board rider off the back of the pool. He's uh, waving his thumbs over. Yeah, be going to pick him up for sure. Okay, copy, mate. A heavy swell pushes into the exposed beach. The Norwich swell just sort of angles in and it bounces straight back out that rip, and it's so strong. An inexperienced surfer has been swept half a kilometre out to sea. As the tide drops, it exposes Bronte's dangerous reef. Bacon heads out. He's quickly followed by volunteer lifesavers. Mate, the clubbies here just launched their IRB. I don't know if they're going for the same thing. Yeah, looking at them now, it looks like they're going over. Um, we should be okay then. You're a fair way out. How do you get out that far? We've got a race going on between Ronnie IRB and Bacon. I'll put my money on Bacon. It's man versus machine to get to the surfer. Yeah, I think Bacon's won the race. Uh, thanks for that anyway. On we uh, won't need the jet ski. The surfer is transferred to the IRB for the trip to shore. Oh, legend. Bacon charts a safe course back away from the reef. But the rescued surfer is being taken on a far more dangerous path. Oh, they're going to get slow. They're going to hit the reef. rescued surfer could now be in much bigger trouble. He's, he's just behind, he's behind the boat. Yeah, no. No, 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 they're there, they're there. Luckily, the only casualty is the boat captain's pride. <laughs> I was having lunch in the back room and I heard people roaring. <laughs> it wasn't the ride Brazilian surfer Jose was expecting. Did you hear any roars? No, no. My board new. I was lucky, man. <laughs> lucky twice. I caught a wave out the back, and by the time I turned back around, there was people scattered across the rocks. Pretty bumpy coming in, but all good now. There's absolutely no way through there. It's just rocks. Then it goes into the bogey hole, so it was, they were gone from, uh, from the start. I've never seen that 
in uh, 34 years of life living here. I haven't seen that done before, so it was pretty impressive. <laughs> it's the first time I rolled the thing in five years. Oh, man, it was a good day to do it. It's a great day to do it. Obviously, a lot of people around the coastal walk have seen it because the fire brigade, ambulance have all been called. But um, now it's all over. Everything's OK now. All over, except for an uncomfortable march past Harry's. Just the captain who signed off and just got me out of the ship. <laughs> I get a phone call from a lady that's up at the golf course saying that she just witnessed a boat get hit by a wave and overturned. And she said the two people in the boat didn't have life jackets on and they were trying to hold on to the, the hull of the boat. Thank you. Yeah, we're on our way. Right over, guys. Just good job. Instantly reached straight for the life jacket and the radio, and before you knew it, we are running out the door, jumping on the jet ski. Response time initially was phenomenal. I mean, from the time we got the call to running out of the tower, jumping on that ski, was literally seconds. And seconds matter. The fishermen won't last long, floating in the water near cliffs. Come on! Right, mate? Outside of the bay, the swell gets bigger. Whoa. But there's no time for quiggers to slow down. It was a, a really dangerous kind of swell, dangerous ocean conditions. Poor Maxie was on the back getting smashed. The backwash swell, you get off the cliffs and that, it's, it's pretty dangerous around there and a number of people do get in trouble. It's been seven and a half minutes since lifeguards received the call. There's still no sign of the upturned fishing boat. Yeah, that's it. That's it. No one out there. We couldn't see them, we couldn't see a boat, we couldn't see anyone floating, and, and then it goes, you know, in the back of your mind, oh, is it not as serious as we thought? Up. Yeah, there's someone pointing up there. Luckily enough, we were able to look up and we could see someone up there waving their arms and kind of pointing in that direction. I just saw the boat go over like a big surge of a wave just about to hit the cliff. We could just make out the upturned boat and a couple of guys kind of clambering on top of it, trying to hold on. Right, jump off and just let me assess. One of the biggest things when I got there was to reassure them that they were going to be OK, even though I didn't really have a good indication of if we were going to be OK, because obviously the boat's overturned in big swell and, you know, these guys are freaking out. Follow essential jet ski. Go ahead, jet ski. EMA, it's affirming we've got to capsize boat tool on top of it. Maxie just jumped off. He's on top as well. Pretty close to rocks. So we should be able to get him off. OK, mate, um, can you just let me know when you secure the patients? Two middle-aged men, both without life jackets, fight for survival. So the boat was really close to the rocks. That was one of the things that kind of played on my mind as I was coming in, head first in a dangerous situation. There are a lot of rocks and, you know, sheer cliff face, just, you know, only 20 metres away from them. All right, jump off, boys. Jump off and come to me. I don't want to get too close and washed on it, OK? The swell was so big. They were just getting battered on and off, and they were cut up. It was covered in barnacles, so they were covered in blood as well. So we didn't know if we'd be able to get them off there and into the water, and they'd be able to swim. Up on the back. Up on the back. That's it. On the sled. On the sled. On the sled. Quick. Yep, that's it. That's it. Hold on. All right, I've got one thing, O's. He's in a tube. Good, mate. So you've got two patients, um, both secured. Is that correct? Ah, uh, Nicky, mate, I've got one. Maxie's got the other still on top of the boat, close to the rock. A round trip to Bondi and back will take Quiggers 10 minutes. OK, mate, good plan. Me and old mate still there on the boat waiting for Ben to come back and pick us up. Still with Maxie. The other man, Mike, is deteriorating quickly. He relies on medication to manage his blood pressure. Because he did say something to me on the boat that was pretty hectic. He goes, you know, I was just about to let go and, you know, not come back up. But then, backup arrives. All right, I've got one thing, O's. He's in a tube. I can see an IRB coming. I mean, get off the rocks and drop him to the IRB. Copy all of that. 
The IRB turned up, which is a bit of a relief as well. So we were able to throw one of them in the IRB. The IRB, or inflatable rubber boat, relieves the pressure by collecting Paul. Hey, come here, mate. Oh, yeah. You take him. Yeah, jump off, jump. That's it. Maxi and the other fisherman, Mike, continue to be swept closer to cliffs on the upturned boat. Quiggers must get close while avoiding being overturned by a wave himself. That's it, hold on. You know, we still had to try and get him back to the beach or back to safety. All right, you hold on, we're right, you're good, mate. And I wanted to take control and make sure that the skipper and the most injured person was with us because he was showing signs and symptoms of losing consciousness. Hello, Central Jet Ski. Go ahead, Ski. Yeah, Singer has just secured the second uh, patient, Ray. Excellent work. Good, boy. Good job, boys. Are they in the IRB? Is that correct? Copy, mate. One's in the IRB, one's with us. All right, we good? But once on the back of the jet ski, Mike struggles to stay conscious. The guy was exhausted, really. He couldn't hang on at all. Maxie had to kind of straddle him on the back, grab hold of him, grab hold of the straps so he didn't go flying off the back. Central to Ben on the jet ski. Are we going to need Nambo for this job, mate? Yeah, that's a firm end. I just knew we had to get him back to shore as quickly as possible. He was cut from head to toe, bleeding everywhere, white as a ghost. Shock and blood loss don't go well together. All right, there you go. Jump off. Jump off. You right? So yeah, dragged him up the beach and straight away, this was a serious matter. All right, jump up. The paramedics were pretty quick to come down and as soon as they put the ECG monitor on him, they knew that he was going downhill pretty quick as well. Paramedics call in a special response team. If Mike was still on his upturned boat now, he would almost certainly be dead.